Hello and welcome to this Haas Tip of the Day. So check this out. With one additional G-code, we were able to bring the cycle time down on this roughing operation by more than 20%. And I'm not talking about just increasing our feed rate. Now this same G-code can also help eliminate 3D surface issues and improve machine accuracy if we know when and how to use it. Today we're going to be talking about the Haas Control's smoothing and accuracy commands, so stick around. Have you ever seen the light cycles from the movie Tron? I was something like 10 years old when this movie came out, but even then I could tell, just from watching the trailer, that these Tron bikes were breaking all the rules they would make sharp turns at full speed without slowing down at all. Now we know from the real world, and by real world I mean cat videos on YouTube, that this is not possible. In the real world, the laws of physics apply. Now our Haas CNC machines don't behave like light cycles or like cats. Our CNC machines are smart, and with high speed machining enabled, they can look way ahead in the program and see a corner coming, and then the machine can slow down only as much as needed to make whatever type of turn that is, smoothly and accurately. On a CNC machine, if we want our tool to make a sharp 90 degree turn around a part, the tool is going to have to decelerate, come to an exact stop in one axis before changing direction and accelerating in the other axis. Now that sharp corner is going to cause us to come to a complete stop, an exact stop. Now if we can round that corner just by a little bit at a tiny little radius of a few thousandths of an inch, just a little tiny, tiny, tiny radius, then we can navigate that corner faster, gracefully, while still holding accuracy on our part geometry. As a footnote here, uh, rounding outside corners is not going to change your part geometry at all. It's not going to gouge your part because we're using round tools. The corner radius would need to be larger than the tool radius for, for that to happen. Uh, imagine that this red line is my actual part. It's not to, to scale, so forgive me. But if my tool path, which is the black line, we're going to wrap around my red line, which is my, my part, it's not going to touch that corner. Watch. If this is the center of my circle, my part, my tool is going to come all the way to this corner and it's going to end up something like that. Nowhere near my part edge. And then it falls down and it, it ends up over here. So the red line here is my part, black line is center of my tool path. Now if I add a little tiny corner radius here, my, my tool still isn't going to touch my part geometry. In fact, I would have to round this corner quite a bit before I saw any problems with interference with my part. Even here, my, my tool is barely making contact there, but my tool path here on this radius is still barely touching the edge of that part. So as long as my corner rounding is smaller than the radius of my tool, you're never going to have an interference problem. We do not gouge parts on Haas machines. Now the machine does all of this for us automatically. It smooths out those intersections, only the sharp corners, uh, but it never rounds a corner more than the value in setting 85. Setting 85 contains our default maximum corner rounding value. Now this is the maximum uh, amount of corner rounding we'll see while in a default state. And this, this number is actually much lar larger than we'll normally see in everyday life. Um, it's all based on the feed that your tool is moving and uh, the excels and decels of your particular machine. Now we have a lot of control over the way corner rounding is done. And if we use a larger corner radius, uh, we can really keep our foot on the gas through those corners. Now here's a part that we were showing you earlier, and it has one of those fancy new um, dynamic adaptive trochoidal tool paths that's all smooth and curvy. There are no sharp corners here. So with a single code, a G187P1, we can tell the machine to keep its foot on the gas. And if you were using a regular tool path that's got sharp corners, it would actually round off those corners just a little bit to keep the speed up. Great cycle time reducer. This G187P1 roughing mode will stay in effect until a plain G187 is called, or we press reset, or we reach the end of our program. This pocket was taking five minutes 
and with the G187P1, it's only taking four minutes. That's a 20% savings in cycle time. Uh, you could probably speed that up, but it's got a couple steps in there. You know, it's not, not too bad. So how is the machine doing this? How are we saving all this cycle time? The manual tells us that G187 is an accuracy command that can control both the smoothness and the maximum corner rounding when machining a part. Our p-value is our smoothness. P1 is rough, we just showed you that. P2 is medium, that's our default. P3 is our finish value. Now, this p-value temporarily overrides whatever we have in setting 191. Our E value, when used with the G187, temporarily overrides the maximum corner rounding in setting 85. We can adjust it for each tool path. If we commanded a G187P2, that's the same thing as just putting the machine in a smoothness of medium, which it's already in by default anyhow, if we hadn't commanded any G187 at all, so we never use that. We'll use a G187P1 for rough, or a G187P3 for finishing moves. And speaking of G187P3, we've got some 3D surface parts here, surface with a ball nose end mill, and they've got some surface blemishes on them. If you see surface issues like this on inside sharp corners, we might be able to fix it with a G187P3. On a 2D part, you've seen this, where if you're creating uh, an inside pocket that has a five millimeter corner radius, and you're creating that with a 10 millimeter diameter tool, that tool might get chatter on the inside corners because the, the, the inside corner radius is being created by that exact size tool. That's not what's happening here. The problem is that we tried to come into a sharp corner with a large end mill. And in the code that is output by our CAN system, that's gonna come out looking like a sharp corner. And what do we know about sharp corners? The control wants to round them to keep our speed up when the machine is using medium or rough, right? Setting 191 or a G187P1 or P2. So this tool path here that created this, this shape is zigging and zagging. I'm going both ways because I want to save time. And as it moves along this path, it might corner around by some small amount going this way, and then the geometry is different coming the other way, and it's not going quite as fast perhaps, and it might corner around by a different amount. Now, that leaves us with these small imperfections in the corner. We're not gouging because we never gouge uh, on our machines. What we're seeing is varying amounts of leftover stock. And by tightening up the corner rounding tolerance by using a G187P3, uh, we can eliminate most of this problem. The G187P3 finish mode made this part look pretty good. But if we want to make it look even better, we can reduce the corner rounding, that, that E value in our program. On this one, I used a G187P3 E 10 thousandths of an inch, 250 micron. If we want to though, we still have another trick up our sleeve. We can give this part a pencil cut. And I love pencil cuts on cavity molds where I can go in and clean up those inside corners. All this tool is doing is, is running right up against the finished surface of my part on those inside corners. It looks beautiful now and it kind of proves that we were never gouging the part. What we were doing was leaving a tiny bit of excess material in those corners that can always be removed. A G187P3 gave us great results on this part, but a G187 is not always the answer to our problem. The real problem here started in our CAD file uh, with those sharp inside corners. If the ball nose is too large to fit inside those, those sharp inside corners, then the G code that is output by your CAM system is gonna have sharp corners. The real way to fix this part is to go into your CAM system, your CAD system, and add fillets that are larger than the tool that you're using in all the inside sharp corners. Or just go with a smaller ball nose to fix the issue. By doing that, the machine can just sweep through this geometry the way it should with, with no problems whatsoever, no G187P3 needed. So cleaning up the model and adding in radiuses larger than the tool we're gonna to use should be your first choice. This is the best practice for 3D machining. Now, if you see small surface issues like this along a surface, make sure the cutting tool is getting plenty of coolant. 
we'll see this type of marring when our coolant concentration is low or our coolant nozzles aren't aimed right at the tool's cutting edges. Without good coolant angles, our, our tool may tear at the material or we might actually be running on top of a pile of chips and driving those, those chips that have already been machined into our surface, marring it. If you're seeing actual gouging, odd finishes on the surface of a part, the problem may have started with the code produced by your cam system. Now we saw this a while back on this bracket part. The badly pitted surface that we see here in this picture wasn't caused by machine smoothness settings or the tool or coolant. It was caused because of a fit tolerance, a cordal tolerance that was too loose in our cam system. Every cam system is different with different algorithms and arc filtering. A uh, good place to start as far as this fit tolerance might be two tenths of a thou to half a thou. It depends on the cam system. If you make that tolerance too tight, you could end up with huge amounts of code though, uh, really, really, really tiny line segments. And when you load that code in your machine and run it, it might overwhelm the control and cause jerky motion. So for more information on this, give your cam supplier a call. They hear about this and deal with it all the time. I wanted to mention, before I let you go, that if you're doing any micro-machining using little tiny end mills smaller than, say, one millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch, that you're probably going to end up using a G187P3 all the time for your finish passes with those tiny, tiny little cutters. Now, you'll see this a lot when you're cutting electrodes or doing engraving, this type of thing. A G187P3 with a tiny E value like five thousandths of an inch or even down to two thousandths of an inch in some cases might be appropriate for some of those those type of jobs really 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 tiny cutters so that's about all we've got for you just remember if you've got inside corner problems on a mold try a g187 p3 if you want to save some time on a roughing operation go with a p1 if you've got marring on the surface of a part make sure your coolant is getting where it needs to go if you've got marring denting around a surface Check out your cam system and your fit tolerance. And if you're riding a Tron bike, not physically possible. <laughs> if you're driving a cat around a corner, uh, not accurate. But if you've got a Haas machine, it is accurate, reliable, and completely adaptable for any kind of tool path you need to run. Well, that's it for this Haas Tip of the Day.